Hey, good morning, everybody. Great to see you this morning, and I hope your week has been fantastic. It's Friday, end of another week, and uh, oh, what a week it's been. And I hope you've had opportunities to experience the peace and love of God in your hearts. Uh, I hope that your home's been filled with peace and you've been enjoying each other. Um, you know, one of the things we talk about a lot is how we can uh, share Christ with our neighbors. And you'd think in the time of uh, global pandemic and self-isolation that, well, I guess we got to shut that down completely and there's no more room for witnessing to our neighbors. Well, that's not true. And uh, I think there's actually great opportunities for us, opportunities we've never experienced before to um, engage with those uh, around us who we care about, who uh, we maybe don't even know yet, but those around us who are our neighbors. And so um, I want to talk with a, a guy today as a friend of Jim's and uh, now become a friend of mine. And we want to talk to him a little bit about uh, neighboring. He does this. He's really thoughtful about this. And so let's uh, let's go to them now. Hey, good morning there, Jim. Good to see you this morning. How are you doing? Oh, great. Yeah, enjoying the sunshine. Does my right. farmer's heart good. That's, I'm seeing sunshine through uh, someone's window there. Why don't you introduce who's with us today there, Jim? Yes, yes. So I'd like to introduce you to my good buddy, Rick. Uh, he actually does a neighborhood life ministry, kind of basically does uh, mission work in central Alberta. That's uh, his calling. So I love what he's about. And uh, we're going to have a little conversation with him here. So Sweet. please take it away, Tim. So Rick, what kind of, uh, what kind of mission work are you doing these days? Well, with the COVID, uh, there's um, uh, a, a dent in the car, so to speak, but it also opens up opportunities because of the things you uh, you can do. You just have to be more creative. We did some care packages for all the neighbors, and uh, I simply forgot when we delivered them to their doorstep and then rang their doorbell, much like the Nicky Nicky Nine Door thing back from the day, if you nice. recall. Yeah, but, uh, so let's I back forgot. us up just a little bit. You were, you're involved in neighboring, good neighboring. Is that right? Yeah, so I run a, a ministry called Neighborhood Life, and it um, basically leads uh, with someone in the neighborhood who understands the vision as a catalyst um, for uh, bringing life to people. Hmm. And this is much of what we've seen in the scriptures and heard Jesus you know, call us to do when he said, love your neighbors. And of course, he uh, meant throughout the world, but not at the expense of those who are right around us where we live. Right. So the idea is, uh, like, I'm in a neighborhood, I'm on a street, I've got probably 10 houses around me. And, and you're saying that somehow I kind of become the, the pastor or the elder or the, the spiritual leader of my neighborhood or some of this? Yeah. It, it can get thick in a hurry and expectations can be high, but I think one of the things that we're after is, is playing a role that, uh, again, maybe would describe you as a catalyst or as a leader. Um, of course, uh, as Christians, we should act as an elder, which is a spiritual leader for those who aren't spiritual or who are lost and they live next door. And that uh, means a whole lot of different things, which is why I do this full time, because some people get concerned and right away count themselves out because of the words we use and they don't right. see themselves in that vision. Uh, what kind of things would I be thinking about or doing if I was that kind of person in my neighborhood? Um, one would be a presence. I think that often we uh, aren't present. Uh, we might think we are. So actually be out in your front yard to some degree and allow yourself to see what God wants to show you. Mm. And if you're in your house or in your backyard, uh, that may not happen. But the challenge is, of course, this is new to you. You, you may be somebody who says, well, I'm going to feel dumb if I sit in my front yard. Yeah. Another thing would be to be um, a person that thinks not just about needs, but that we would love our neighbors, uh, let's say 50% of the time on a needs basis, and 50% of the time um, living out of our abundance, out of our giftedness, just because mm -hmm. you can. 
and not wait for the need to be there before we start to participate. But presence is huge. I would say if, if God wanted to show you something in, in your neighborhood, can he show you or um, are you not there? Are you not present? Um, so basically, I walk my neighborhood. Um, you sit on the front yard instead of the back. And those are just some simple things that can help uh, you understand or put yourself in a great position to see what God is up to so you can join him. That's really good. That's really good. Now, COVID-19 is throwing a bit of a wrench in this whole deal. Well, it doesn't restrict us from movement, so you can still be uh, walking your block. I think that um, you can still observe what's going on. Um, you can see uh, what people do in terms of how they live. Um, people are eager to wave and say hi, and even still talk at a distance. Um, you can see what they're planting, especially now that the weather's getting a little nicer and uh, what they do outside. Um, there are a number of things that um, are hard to explain, but that's why it's so important to be present so you can see and to begin to engage perhaps at some level. That's really good. And we could be praying for people, right? Praying Amen. for different houses and the different people that are inside them. And yeah. And I do think that uh, statistics have shown that church attendance under the COVID-19 restrictions have gone up 300% in Canada. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and I think that's because a lot of parishioners who do have somewhat of a relationship with their neighbors or others as well have, have forwarded on some of the stuff um, as a way in which they can share. So yeah. I have a neighbor yesterday because we were out walking. He bought two new bikes off Kijiji and he wanted to show them off. And so I was present and I listened to his story. And, uh, and he is the one who, uh, who shares some of the, the spiritual findings now that he's at home to another neighbor who, whose marriage is on the brink and mm. whose kid, teenage kid is cancer. And yeah, these are some, some things that are happening that you can't predict, but right. they aren't going to happen if you don't get out on the street. You know what? That's a, that's a fantastic word. And uh, boy, thanks so much for your time today, Rick. Really appreciate that. Jim, thanks for setting this up. And uh, we're just going to continue to encourage each other, motivate each other, spur each other on to doing these kind of good things for the sake of the kingdom. Thank you so much. Amen. Well, what a great encouragement, hey? Um, we can think that during these days of COVID-19 that we, uh, you know, there's self-isolating means we have no contact with anybody. And while we do need to be very careful, I think things like sitting on our front porch or in our front yard and waving at people as they walk by and uh, encouraging them, uh, um, engaging in conversation if they want to engage in conversation, but just being present and visible is something we can all do. Again, very be very careful with social distancing, but um, but be more than invisible, I guess. That was a great encouragement. We can also be praying. Just as you sit on your front lawn or on your porch or look out your window, pray for your neighbors, even if you don't know their names. Just pray for them. Ask God to be blessing them and encouraging them. The other opportunity we have is uh, because we have so much more virtual contact, and everybody's doing this virtually, that you can share. Like, let's say you watch the weekend service, and if it meant a lot to you, then just post it on your Facebook wall and just say, hey, really enjoyed this today. If you're looking for uh, some hope and some uh, connection with God, this might be a good thing to check out. So you can just do that. And we find different ways to connect with people. Uh, so let's, uh, let's allow God to use us to continue to uh, be a blessing to our community, blessing to Sylvan Lake. God bless you guys. Have a great weekend. <music>